the uh, one thing I've been always wondered is uh, how did we ever get started in building the A1 project in the first place? Well, the A1 was uh, it's something that uh, we wanted to fit into the museum collection, and it's uh, it's a significant airplane of Curtis's early work because this was the first airplane that he finally taught the Navy in the line after he demonstrated that he could land on the water and get picked up on a ship crane and get back in the water and take off. And, and they finally got the idea, it was the, uh, the battleship dominated thinking of the Navy was a little bit slow to pick up on the airplane, you know, Jesus. And, uh, For many years after yeah, that too, I think. Well, sure, but uh, certainly early in the game. And, uh, when he could, when they finally gave him the, yeah, okay, build us an airplane, but we want to have we want to have it capable of, of land and sea, and we want it to be uh, capable of carrying two people, and and for a two-hour duration of flight. So I think, not knowing how they were actually thinking, but I think they gave him an objective that that uh, probably looked pretty difficult in 1911. And uh, he said, okay, I'll build you one. And, and, he, that, and he did. And he did. And, uh, uh, and we have in our collection, we have a 1912 land plane uh, pusher. And uh, we have a 1913 flying boat, which we built in our shop in the flu of 99. And uh, this one kind of fit in between real nicely. And it, was, it was just a lot of interest in doing this. We thought we could we're really only two generations away from the guys that flew it. And, uh, and, uh, Towers was one of them, he was still a lieutenant. He was one of the first guys to fly the thing. And uh, Ely and those, all those early, uh, early the pilots at Curtis train. And uh, it's just a significant, real significant airplane. The, uh, I guess really to fit in our collection and, and fit in with something real significant is our was our objective of taking this one out. Interesting. Well, it certainly does fly well. I, I was amazed at how well it flies. And uh, I've gotten, what, 42 minutes in it now after 13 flights. And uh, it was quite an experience for me. Well, it's not too much of a departure uh, from what you're used to flying, which is the 777. But actually, what you're used to flying is a, is a CB, which is a pusher amphibian. But I think the thing that, that uh, it does not glide. I mean, it's got an ungodly amount of drag. And I think you found out after watching your first couple, three landings, I think you found out that you pretty well got to power this one in. You can't, uh, you can't let it glide down a landing. You've got to fly it into a landing. Well, and, and we didn't know that either. Of course, us builders aren't knowledgeable. The, the problem I ran into that I only found in retrospect was that I was getting too slow. It wasn't a matter of the power, but my plan was to get it about a foot off the water in a nose-high attitude. And the pilot uh, can only see the canard and has no idea what the deck angle is. And of course, the big worry is getting the nose down and plowing it into the sea. However, um, when you get down as slow as I was getting it, um, it gets into a pre-stall kind of wobble. So I fixed that uh, by forcing myself to add power uh, on landing and land at a higher speed and then kept it a bit flatter and that seemed to make all the difference in the world. Mm -hmm. I noticed in your in your last landing last